want us to hear from the Lord. And our topic today is perseverance. Our speaker graduated from the Univ uh, Moy University School of Medicine with a bachelor's degree in medicine and surgery. Yes, he's born again in fellowship at Deliverance Church, Kakamega. He is a disciple maker and also do part of mentorship. He is single. <laughs> Members, our speaker is single. <laughs> and he is called Dr. Bran Chinuli. We can appreciate the Lord as he joins us. Father, even as we sit down to listen, we pray that you may use your servant to speak to us. Oh Lord, in Jesus' name, I do believe and pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know why the speaker has to emphasize on a few things, <laughs> but we still praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, you have been introduced. I think I came with a team that I would love them to just say their name and then they sit down. Please come forward. It's good to come with please come forward. It's good to come with people when you're coming to preach because sometimes you might not be in a position to preach so they can stand in to preach. So in case I wouldn't preach, one of them would have preached uh, on behalf of me today. So just tell us your name and uh, who you are. Uh, quickly. Don't preach. They have a tendency to preach, please. Don't preach. Hi, praise the Lord. Good morning for you. My name is Brighton Kabulambu. I am a finalist student in the School of Medicine. Praise God. Praise the Lord again. My name is Patricia Machetti. I am his classmate. Praise God. Amen. Praise God again. Uh, my name is Kevin Oden. I am a fourth year, not a finalist, in the School of Medicine. Praise God. Amen. My name is Mwenderi Jati. Uh, Dr. Brian Shuli was my classmate in 2013, first year. You may have your seats. Uh, Machete and Brighton have been in school for the last five years, but they take a course that takes four years. Odeni has been in school for about six years, but it takes a course that is in fourth year, but takes a course that takes around six years. Uh, so they have been persevering throughout. And, uh, the Lord has been great to them. So today we'll be sharing about uh, perseverance. And uh, I pray that the Lord will help us to grasp what is prepared for us today. That even as we leave this place, we'll be blessed. And just to do a quick recap of what happened yesterday between 10 p.m. and 12 a.m., we had a very wonderful match between. <laughs> between Chelsea and Manchester City. Actually, Manchester City is the best team, second after Chelsea. Yes. And uh, one of the things that I was learning, uh, this is these are the teams that have the best players in the world. Yes. They have the best coaches in the world. They are playing the best places in the world. But what we don't remember is how vigorous they trained and they prepared before the match yesterday. So whatever we were seeing yesterday, was what has been happening over many years in preparation for the, for the event that happened yesterday. And these people, when they are going through that training, they do daily, that's their career. They have to be taught how to make accurate passes, how to attack, how to manage time, and everything, so that they can win. Their goal and their focus is on the cup. Yesterday was on the Champions League Cup. That was the focus. And you can see all that thing, all that they were doing was in preparation for the cup. 
and they played so well to win that cup. Now, these just are three things that were preparing that they were preparing for to get that cup. It does not have any eternal significance in their lives. But as Christians, how far are we going to persevere as we look at the goal of salvation? Praise God. Yes, so I'm a fan of Chelsea and we are happy to be here. So, um, you know, each one of us will have their day to win, isn't it? And so celebrate with us. People, people were saying that uh, Manchester City, Manchester United were more sad than Manchester City. I don't know why. So let's, let's, let's go to the topic of today. Uh, we'll be talking about perseverance. I just like that foundation so that as even look at this topic, God will help us to understand why we should persevere in this journey of salvation. And I want to appreciate uh, everyone who's been here before who ministered to you. Uh, this is not the only time when we send the Lord. We we'll send the Lord from the time the service begins to the end. So everyone who's been here is a minister of the Word of God. And uh, we wish well all the elders who are uh, getting to the end of their studies in college. We will pray that God will help you transit well to the next level and open doors for your success and also thanks to life. So, I just want to make a friendly reminder to you that yes, you are in this fellowship or this church today. Some of you are born again and others are not. But you receive that salvation through repentance and belief and faith you have in Jesus Christ. Uh, you don't have to do anything for the atonement of your sins because that was already done on the cross by Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So that means that he has made everything right with God between you and God, right? You don't have to think about your past sins because sometimes if we want to, to dig up our past sins, we will not be right people even to stand before God to preach about his message. You have to be careful also as you live in your present moments not to focus on your sins, but to be very cautious about the presence of, the, of God in your life so that every single moment your spirit is sensitive and alert to ask forgiveness when you sin. And you've been given a promise that even God is willing to forgive our future sins. You don't know the sins you're going to commit in the future, but God is willing to forgive you. Praise the Lord. Now, it's easy for us to fall back when we sin and feel like we can't continue the journey of salvation because of the sins that we've committed. In doing so, we tend to try to work our own salvation and leaving Christ out of the picture. But the message of the gospel is all founded on Christ Jesus. Praise God. Without Christ Jesus, we wouldn't have the message of the gospel. So I want us to, as we live our lives as Christians, our eyes to be fixed on Christ so that we don't miss on the mark of salvation. Praise God. So uh, I'll try to be a teacher. I think teachers make people understand things better uh, when it comes to critical things of life. See you. So, perseverance, you might have heard about it several times, we've been using this term, uh, and we don't know what it is, or we know about it, but we cannot define it when we are asked. But you know them. Uh, so, I try to rule up the meaning of perseverance from the dictionary, and this is what it said. This is what I picked, so I think there are a lot of definitions. That perseverance is continued effort to do or achieve something despite all difficulties, all opposition, all pressures, while focusing on the ultimate goal. So I want us to work the word ultimate goal, that you are persevering, you are determined, you are making an effort despite all the things you are facing in your life as looking at, while you are looking at the ultimate goal. The other synonyms are things like determination, which is a firmness in purpose. You have something you're looking forward to and you're determined. People say that determination is more greater than hard work. I don't know, is it true? Like, if you're determined, you're likely to succeed than someone who's just working hard. You'll think about that. Determination to do something. You made up your mind, this is what I want to do. Whatever comes up, I focus on it. For the people who are doing engineering or my friends of Luo, you can use the word tenacity. Tenacity means the quality or fact of a material to, to be strong or to have a firm 
grip. So, so, yes. Also, it can mean to be persistent in what you are pursuing in your life. So that is it. And our journey as believers and as Christians, we are going to face difficulties. We are going to face challenges. We are going to face oppositions. We will be looking briefly at a few people in the Bible who persevered through seasons and times that were so difficult that some of us cannot endure those moments, but still they were looking at the ultimate goal of salvation, which is eternal life, in their journey of faith. And then, uh, it's not just that, uh, you, know, you know the funny thing about, or the good thing about salvation, when you get born again, you're not lifted from this earth to heaven, where you live a sinless life, or where there's things, you no know, like temptation, you, you, you are not taken away from the struggles of this life. You remain on this earth, go through the same struggles you go through, but your life has been changed because of received Christ in your life. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, um, it simply means as long as you are a believer, or as long as you are on this earth, you are a potential person to get uh, struggles or to persevere through many things. And all of us are going through different struggles in life or opposition or challenges in life. It can be family, it can be social, it can be academic, it can be it can be many things that you're going through. Praise the Lord. That are really testing your faith and testing how strong you are to withstand whatever you're going through. One as if you will. Yes, I usually tell people that if you get a point from the word of God, you say Amen. To give glory to God and also to encourage the preacher. One as if you will. So as we come and look at uh, the biblical perspective of perseverance, it is, it is having confidence and trust in God that in all situations and difficult moments you are going through, God is going to still see you through because of the grace and the mercy is shown upon our lives. So that is simply to mean that we are encouraged to carry on the message of the cross every single moment of our lives. Uh, regardless of what happens, um, we might be having good ideas, good thoughts, good purpose of work, but still you're going to face setbacks, you're going to face opposition, you're going to have barriers that will limit you on whatever you're doing. And you can even see that even in our planning. Maybe you're planning for missions to go to Mount Elgon, you don't have enough finance, you don't have people who are willing to go. You are being told that you cannot go there because of COVID and many other things. You have a lot of challenges that will be facing preparation for all those things. But you are encouraged to keep on the faith, to move forward. You might also be in your life face another things that will test your faith. But being persistent will help you to deal with those stress. And we are living in a funny world, I would say, or a world that is full of failures and oppositions, or a world that is full of challenges that will test uh, your faith. I don't know if you have seen people who are getting married, they usually tell stories that Amuji Pene Tumetoka. Most of the time when they say Amuji Pene Tumetoka, they are referring to those struggles and moments that they were almost breaking up, but they still found on the faith and they kept going on. Praise the Lord. So, I just want to encourage us that whatever we have, the confidence we have in Christ is going to help us to move forward and trust God. So I'll ask the media team to be helping me to project the verses so that you can move quickly. So you can uh, project James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. So perseverance is not just only us planning to live in moments of struggle or moments of opposition, but it's also the way God teaches us to live in obedience to Him. Because the life of a Christian is under close scrutiny and there are a lot of expectations as you learn to live in obedience to God. So it's also a way of God teaching us to learn to humble ourselves and to trust Him in everything that we are doing. So this is what the Bible says. Consider it great joy, my brothers, whenever you experience various trials, other versions will say temptations, struggles, or opposition. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Endurance can also mean perseverance or uh, persistence of trials. But endurance must do its complete work so that you may be mature and complete lacking nothing. So uh, it's not just that when you're tested or when your faith is tested, 
it's just something that's passing by. But as you go through a struggle, it helps you to mature your character and your personality to be able to withstand other struggles in life. And that's why even in fellowship, you have people who give testimonies of their lives on how they overcame some things in life and become the source of encouragement to the other people in the fellowship. And that's why the Lord reminds us that they overcame the devil by the word of their testimony. Senior? Yes. So, when you go through moments of struggle, it's not in vain. Praise God. It's not in vain. Things that test your faith, they give you knowledge and power to be stronger in life. Bonus if you will. Uh, if you don't go through things that will test your character, your strengths, and your power, you never know how to overcome those things. Bonus if you will. Now, we also open the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 5. Chapter 4, verse 5. Yes, this is what the Bible says. But as for you, keep a clear head about everything. In your hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. I don't know, we will look at a few examples, they will tell us what the work of an evangelist is and the things they used to endure. But this is a message to all of us. You might be an evangelist and a disciple of maker, you can be a teacher, you can be a prophet, you can be, you know, whatever ministry you are serving. I know in the course of your service, there are challenges and hardships you are going to face. But the Bible reminds us that you keep your head up, endure the hardships that you go through and fulfill the work of an evangelist. It's a call, it's a command from God, not our own. And so, as you serve God, even in your ministry, those are hardships that you're going to face. When you are supposed to go to the bush to pray and you find people are studying there, it might be a challenge for you. But keep the faith and do the work that you've been commanded to do from the Holy Scriptures. So quickly, let's talk about a few people in the Bible who endured hardships or who persevered through but they had a goal to achieve. If I ask this question, you will quickly tell me about few people that you know in the Bible who persevered through hard times and they succeeded. Isn't you? Like Job. Job is actually the first one people think about. Another one? Eh? Joseph. Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul. Mm -hmm. Individual, individuals. You can pray and conclude the service from there. What does it feel? So, we have a lot of examples in the Bible that you cannot complete today, but we just mention a few and learn a few lessons from them who persevered through times and they were focusing on the goal of the perseverance. Now, I'll take the first example at Jesus because Jesus is always our standard of living. If you have to consider any display of perseverance in the Bible, Jesus then will be our standard. I think he's the only person who died a very miserable death on the cross. Now, if you read your Bible well and do some history back then, anybody who died on the cross, that was considered a shameful death, that was the greatest punishment on the cross. So, so. Now, apart from Jesus, all the other people used to be they used to be tied on the cross and then they died there, but Jesus was nailed on the cross. Born as if you. So when you're nailed on the cross, it means your, his body was hanging. It was nailed on this hand, this other hand, and the body was hanging. When you're hanging, like, you stress your body to breathe. The diaphragm, and or, or then you will now explain to us this, that you, when the breathing exercise becomes hard, and then you eventually get tired of breathing, and then you die. So that was a very shameful death. But if you, if, you, if you look at what happened just before his death, he was scorned, he was, uh, he was, uh, he was beaten, he was, many bad things happened to him just before he got to the cross. He was accused of many things. And this is a man who was sinless, who was very right with God. He lived a life of ministry, not, he didn't sin in any way or any form, but he ended up dying a very shameful death. For the sake of our sins. He persevered through that agony on the cross and died and resurrected for the sake of us and for the sake of you as a believer. 
There's a Bible scholar outside that if Jesus was dying on the cross for the sake of the sins of the world, even if you are alone in this world, you still come and die on the cross for your sins to be forgiven. The only challenge is that you would have put Jesus on the cross when you are alone. <laughs> so, um, these are perfect example in our lives of how to endure hardships in life and to persevere through the journey of salvation. Now, when you look at Jesus, he knew that for the world to be saved from the uh, condemnation of sin, he had to die on the cross for the sins to be forgiven. So he didn't consider the, the suffering that he went through as final. He had to go through all those things for him to bring salvation to mankind. Buona situa. I don't know who would be willing to die on the cross at the moment for the sake of the world. Some of us are not willing even to die for two people or one. So it's hard to get someone to die on the cross at the moment. Buona situa. But this man Jesus died on the cross for the sake of our sins. Number two, we talked about Paul, and uh, there's no any other conversation, conversion story uh, like the one that Paul, that is talked about from the story we have about Paul. You see, this is a man who's been killing Christians, who's been totally against Christianity, and then suddenly become so passionate about the same thing that was against but the moment he became against what he used to condemn, he becomes, he had to go through a lot of suffering. I don't know if you know the suffering that Paul went through. He was put in prison several times, not just once, several times, and put on chains. He was exposed to death many times. He, almost, he was almost killed. And then he was persecuted many times. He was beaten several times, then actually, actually Bobo said that he received 39 lashes five times. And then this ship was shipwrecked several times. Shipwrecking means that your ship gets destroyed in the sea. And many of us, you don't know how to swim. You can imagine yourself in the sea. Uh, to so many times he suffered, many times he went through hard times, he was accused, he suffered a lot, but he still held on the message of the gospel. And he believed that for the world to reach and to get this message, I must remain firm. And even if you look at the Bible, you see many other characters in the Bible whom if Paul was not there, they wouldn't have made an impact the way they have made. Look at the life of Timothy. Look at the life of uh, Titus. These are people who were mentored by Paul. They were encouraged by the children that he went through. They were encouraged by, by how he served, how he worked for Jesus. And he suffered all through that. You've talked about Job, who was a righteous man before God. And he stayed true in all circumstances, in all situations to God. He was blameless and upright. So he served God with diligence. He was a diligent follower, but Satan wanted to prove to God that he could break the man's will. That is Job. So God actually allowed Satan to test uh, Job. And then uh, he only told Satan that don't take away the life of this man because he's my beloved and he's my righteous person. So, within just one day, Job had received a lot of sad news. You can imagine when you have been told that your father has passed on. No, when you have a sound, you have a few moments ago. Or your mother has passed on. Or your sister has passed on. Or your close friend has passed on. That one will break you so much. For those who are dating, you have been told that your girlfriend or boyfriend just involved in an accident, they passed on. You cry a lot. But Job, he lost his sons, his daughters, he lost his possessions, he lost many things within a single day. So his servants were coming with different news, this one has happened, this one has happened. It was so terrible for him, but still, he praised the Lord. His friends advised him to do otherwise, to cast God and do many things, but he didn't do that. He realized that the power of God that was living in him was stronger than whatever was happening. So he still remained steadfast 
and cling to the thing that he told God. And God repaid him. How many times? Yeah. How many times? And you will find out that so that you can also have a homework to do. God repaid him for all that he had lost. But still he didn't lose his faith. You also remember the story of the persistent widow who used to go to the king. That story, you can read it from the book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8. The story of the persistent widow. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 to 8. So this story is told of a widow who used to go before a judge to ask for justice. Uh, this is a widow who was God fearing and he has tried to get uh, justice but didn't get it for so long. He goes to a man who doesn't know God completely, tries to plead with this man that he wants justice to be done for the wrong that has been done to her. But this man is not the fear of hell. But of course, if you fear hell, that you get born again and live faithfully, so that you go to heaven, it's still the better. But our goal to get saved and be born again, to live a life of obedience to God, is that you want to live in obedience to God and to, to also inherit eternal life at the end of the day. The ultimate goal is eternal life. Born as if you Yes. I'll be glad sometime when I get to heaven, I meet Brian. On when he's getting out of his mansion and just walking on the street with God. I'll be very glad to see most of you in heaven and we say you really made it because you persevered through it. as if you so that we don't get to heaven and we're seeing I don't know if we'll be seeing hell. I don't know, but we we didn't want to miss one of us in heaven. But you know what? It's not a good decision to be in heaven. It's an individual decision to be in heaven. So you might be seated here. Uh, some of us might be in heaven, some of us might be in heaven when the day comes. What else if you? So it's an individual decision, but it's going to be very nice that we meet some point in heaven and we really made it because we kept the faith. So in trying to persevere, in all truth, we must try to live to persevere and also to please Christ and not people. That's why the decision to get born again, see the decision here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I said to walk okay. No. It's your own decision to decide to get born again. It's your own decision to decide to live for Christ. The times you not be in a place like this one for fellowship where people will be speaking to you and encouraging you to continue keeping the faith. You'll be alone. In a place you decide to go to church or not. So then you give your decision. The fellowship is there to encourage you and to keep lifting you also to keep only brotherhood because even in the old times the fellowship keeps people accountable, keeps you on track, it helps you to live faithfully because there's someone watching over you but what happens when no one is watching you? That's when your true character is going to be revealed. Bonus if you Yes. So as we live, remember that you've been born again and you never promise the salvation you receive of eternal life. That should be your greatest hope and greatest encouragement today. Uh, help me project James chapter 1, verse 12. You know, you know, some of you just see uh, these guys abroad and they are winning those men. You know, they just, they're, they're taught how to start like for three months. Just how to start to run. And then they're told how to maintain the pace. How to stop. So it's a lot of, it's, it's a journey that requires commitment, determination, and uh, um, hard work. If you don't do that, you don't succeed. So this is what the Bible says. Blessed is a man who endures trials, because when he passes the test, he will receive the crown of life that he has promised to those who love him. Um, the trials will be there, but the crown should be a motivation for us to endure to the end. Uh, Galatians 6, 9 as well, let's read. It's more of an encouragement in our journey of salvation that our salvation is not a short sprint, it's a marathon, that's a long distance. But we need to keep uh, walking with faith, we need to keep running with faith, upholding the virtues of a believer in faith. So that regardless of what happens along the way, we are fixing our eyes on the price at the end. So it needs to be intentional, it needs to be a task for it, it needs to be purposeful, it needs to be 
If you get obstacles around, you must make sure you are overcoming them and also trying to fix your eyes on the end. You might get encouragement from others, just as in athletes, people are cheering you up and uh, like yesterday people are cheering, people are playing that uh, football. Even you are not there, but you are cheering them up and telling them that this is what we want from them. You might still not get that encouragement from people to keep the faith. In fact, you are likely to get discouragement in the faith. Senior, you know, you can imagine, you read so well, you prepare for exams so well, and then you fail. You didn't copy, you did everything you could. Someone else doesn't even study. Every weekend, I'm going to do that. They don't get time to study. When the exams comes, they sit down and discuss the exam. Or they cheat in the exam, they pass and go on. You told that you have to sit for a supplementary or to repeat a year. And then this person is not been reading, they are told you pass your exams, proceed to the next class. In your heart, you know well that they didn't deserve that win. It was not there, they did not make it. You know in your heart that even if fairness was to happen and everyone gets their fair marks, you'd have, you'd have scored more than them. But you are told that no, you have to sit for a supplementary. So it happens. Alafu una kushikwa na kinyonga. Yaito kinyonga, kama kiwaru, you start feeling bad. Why? Why are bad things happening to good people? But no one told you you are good anyway. So you start feeling, uh, no, you know, those are things that are testing your faith and or you get that exam and you feel like, no, I can also do this. You say, you tell your this idea, you make a new one. You start thinking about doing that supplementary if someone else is fast and that you have business as usual. Those are things that you test your faith as you live your life. Buona sifiri. Or even in dating relationship, people who don't come to church, they exhale so much, they have good time together, they are going for dates outside this place, they go with, and you, you don't even have to want to go, to go out. <laughs> and then they are thriving well, and you start thinking, God, why can't you give me money so that I can also thrive well and it doesn't come? So you start feeling like, oh, the other people are doing well than me, what can I do? And then you start saying, I have to look for ways of getting money and so that I can treat my friend well. It happens, right? Yes. The other thing that is in your faith, that you will want to remain faithful. And by the way, um, I think the best thing in our lives is to be patient in everything that we do. If you have to get money, be patient because even if you have to get that degree, you need to be patient. You can imagine coming to the university on Monday, then on Sunday, you're told this is your degree, go home. You will not even treasure it. See you? Yeah, you, you, can, you can imagine you, you, you come here and you told that us. Or you come here, all of you, you are told that you're going to give you 10 million each. Our, the value of that money will not be good. See you? So I think good things take time and it needs to be patient in our lives as we wait for them. But of course, money is good, but money is also a source of evil. So as Christians, we need to keep in mind that uh, our Christian life is a struggle. We live in a fallen life, fallen sinful world, uh, where things will not go the way we want them to go. Even Paul said that the things I want to do, I don't do them. Or the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. So that the way you want to live your life, not the way it's going to happen. But you must be willing to adjust to what God is instructing you. You know, sometimes you want even to finish college very early. You say you say to yourself that in 2020 I'll be, I'll be done with college. In 22 I'll be married. In 2025 I'll be doing my masters. In 20, you set even timeline, but it happens that it doesn't it doesn't work according to the way you set your timelines. And the Bible reminds us that you plan the way you want to live, but God decides how we should do. So put it to God and tell Him, I learned I learn to trust in You. Or now to live my life. So um, we shouldn't. We should teach our minds and our hearts to learn to appreciate what God is doing in our lives, especially in waiting upon the Lord in times of struggle, and even as we pray to Him to help us, uh, our prayers answered. And the moments when expected things happen, we should also tr trust God that His will happens in our lives, so that we don't lose focus on the things that we are, we are living for. Uh, 
the best we could do for ourselves as Christians, distinct us from the non-believers, is to learn to live from the promises of God. Uh, our default setting, I, I should remind people, is that you are, you are default to be sinful. If you are left without check, you can easily sin. Isn't it? But so we, we need we need instant rebooting and resetting of our factory settings so that we can live for Christ every single moment. Uh, we don't just have to move on daily in sin or in the struggles, we fall in struggles or in the challenges we face in life because it's common to man. But we have to learn to align ourselves with the will and the purpose of God. It's hard, yes, but that's the only way we'll overcome the challenges of sin. The challenges of opposition, the challenges of the hardships we're going to face through in life. So, uh, if you're reading the book of uh, Colossians, chapter 1, 29. Colossians, chapter 1, verse 29. It says, uh, you decided to go to the authorized version. Well, and I also never serving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So that as we strive to live for Christ, it's not us trying to put our way in our lives, but it's Christ trying to help us live according to his will in our lives throughout. So that in the end, we may become blameless and we may be found faithful in our journey of life. Now, as you walk through life, don't take these struggles as personal attacks. You want people to say, God, why me? You want that? Why me? Who do you want it to be? Yes? Who do you want it to be? We should learn to take these things as areas of growth in our lives, not as personal attacks that tend to do that at all. That have, that have come our way to destroy as or to test our faith and go away. But things that are going to make us to be better in our lives. So don't get frustrated or filled with anger or pride when you go through trials in life. If Christ went through trials, if Paul went through trials, if Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Anna, Joseph went through all those trials and they knew that they came out successful. Actually, all people went through trials in the Bible, they were successful in the end. Yeah. Yes, that's a good example to us, to teach us that we need to keep our faith and maintain our prayers and our faith to God as we live. So, the only way we have our life of perseverance uh, remain strong is to continue to put our confidence in Christ, not in our own self. We are very weak beings. A small challenge will tickle us off and we might fall. But if we have our confidence in Christ, our encouragement comes from Christ, we'll find a bearing in our lives to live for Him and Him alone. So as I wind up, because I'm seeing my time is quickly going, it does not mean I must preach everything that I prepared. Uh, so as I, I near the end, Uh, our lives will be filled with those moments that we can't take away. Like, you know, we cannot predict the future for ourselves. But for sure, the hard times will come. But what counts is how you keep your faith when they come. Now, I want you to ask yourself uh, the areas in your life where you are remaining firm and putting your hope on Christ regardless of the challenges. And still ask yourself on the area that have easily made you to wander away from the faith. Because maybe it's something that happened once in your life or something that recurring in your life. Like social things might not be one time thing, it might be a long struggle in life. Because some of us maybe are coming from families where people are not born again. And those are our family, the things that we cannot take away from ourselves. It can still be 
decisions you made over your life that are still haunting you to this point. And you feel so guilty of your past that has happened. And you wonder if God will ever forgive you for the sins you committed or the actions you did. Of course, you don't have the power to go back into your past and to change whatever happened in your past. But you have the power to go to God and ask Him to forgive you and let you live a free life. God has if you. Yes. Because there's actually a danger if we don't persevere through these things. There's a danger if we become comfort in the areas that are that we are struggling with that we just become lazy. If we don't take care of those comfort zones and we say this is normal to me, I will just live that way. Of course, I'm a human being. It's a danger to spiritual life, it's a danger to the journey of salvation. So we need to be willing to persevere without giving up. Uh, you need to learn to overcome the discouragement that will come along the way. You need to find yourself a firm foundation in the church, in the fellowship, to find someone who is accountable to you. So that as you go through struggles of life, as you go through hardships of life, you can have someone you can share with. Bonus if you. Bonus if you. Because I can tell you for sure, if you walk this journey alone, you are likely to fail. Like, not really likely, but the chance of failing are high than if you have someone who is keeping you accountable. You love friends who not necessarily provide solutions to your problems or to your struggles, but they help you look at it from a different eye or a different perspective that you don't have. Because I'm so sure if you come to the chairperson of the union and tell them that you don't have school fees worth 45,000, you might not be able to give that school fees. It's new. But he can tell you, have you talked to the dean, have you talked to the finance, have you tried to apply for this and this? They try to help you open up. Um, you are that eye and see things from a different perspective. And then there are things that are common to us as youth, which when you share with your colleagues, someone you trust, they can help you to find a way out. I think the things that people have been having so much struggle in our, our youth life is struggles that, start, that, that tend to seek instant gratifications in our life, in this life. Things like you want instant money, and that's when you want to bet, you want to steal, you want to sell your stuff so that you can get money instantly. No. Things like masturbation seek instant gratification and people struggle with it so much. Things like sexual purity is a struggle that's going on in our age group. But when you start opening up to a friend or someone you trust, they help you look at it from a different perspective. Maybe some of them will tell you, I've also been struggling with the same. And this is how I overcame it. Go on as you So it's just a reminder that our help is right next to us. God did not just send us to come to this fellowship with all these people for nothing. Each one of us is a carrier of something that can help each other to grow and move towards the goal of salvation. Praise God. So I need to learn to find people. I came with friends. Timo told you that He's been my friend since 20, it was actually 12 November or 2013. We've been friends since the time we joined college until this time. Of course we completed college and we, we live in different places, but we're still friends. I'm not saying we had a lot of struggles, I'm just saying that things we shared with one another and we built one another to grow over them. So, so, yes. But I know all of us have struggles in life that you need to have a helping hand so that you can overcome them. So you look at your life. Reflect what are the things that you need to persevere, things you need to endure, things that you need to forego so that you can live a life that will please God. It's not an easy journey. Christ Himself suffered and died for the sake of that. He persevered all through.
all our church examples still, you went through all suffering for the sake of the message of the gospel and many other people could mention. I want us to learn to trust God in all these trying moments and to learn to lean on Him even at the time we see that there is nothing that is likely to come out of this. You know, this this song that is sung by Travis Green that he made a way. Really God makes a way. If he has never made a way in your life, you need to hold it to your life well. For me, I've made many ways in my life even when I really didn't see a way out. If he has never made a way in your life, hold it to your life. Have a meeting with yourself maybe this evening, create some two hours, meet with yourself, discuss a few things and reflect and see how God has been working in your life. And for sure, God is faithful. He will not let us to be tempted to the point where we cannot understand. Because everything that comes our way, He has allowed us to overcome that challenge. Bonus, if you will. So I want to... Wait. So this message is going to be very useless to you if you are not born again. We are talking about um, the examples we've used in the Bible. If you are not born again, it will only be useful to you if you are willing to let your life to live for Christ. And the Bible tells us that anyone who believes in Christ that died on the cross for the sake of our sins is to be forgiven and set free. Uh, we don't want to live in the bondage of sin every single time of our lives and be hostage to whatever happened in our lives. Continually sin or looking forward that maybe a time will come when we get born again. If you are not born again, it's actually an emergency for you to get born again. What happens if we die today? Where will your soul be today? You need to ask yourself that question. What happens that I'm born again, but still I'm not living a right life with God? I'm not like Job, who's blameless, who's right with God, who has persevered everything. My level of perseverance is nothing. You need to pray to God that He gives you a heart to endure, to persevere, to go through all these challenges and all the trials you face through, that you may become our successful looking at the goal. Also, I must remember that our ultimate goal, even as we serve as Christians, is looking forward to eternal life, that Christ will come and find us faithful. You are good stewards of everything that you put on us. You've taken good responsibility, you've been accountable to the lives you've been living because we learn to endure the hardship that you face through. And we also want to pray that God will continue to teach us to learn to, learn to thrive in His grace and mercy that is shown upon our lives so that at the end, may get to the end. So I will not ask you to come forward uh, if you want to get born again. I'll ask you to search your heart and ask God to forgive your sins. Uh, tell God that you want to begin this journey of faith and you want Him to walk with you, to guide you, to fill your life with the Holy Spirit so that you can live for Him and for Him alone. And even tell God that you want Him to give you strength and power to persevere through all the hardships of life and all the challenges you face through so that you may remain firm in the faith. Ask Him for the time you've not been able to endure the hardships and the challenges you face as a Christian. For the times you feel you fail, that He help you to stand strong and stand for Him all through. That He gives you the character of Jesus, the character of Paul, the character of Joseph. As you live your life, you live to please Him. And even as people look at your life, if they don't be able to come to church, at least they can see something in your life that they can emulate and live for. I just make that prayer as you reflect in your life. If there are areas in your life that are needed to go for perseverance, pray that God will help you to persevere through those times and those uh, moments. If there are things in your family, in your friendship, in your school, in your college, whatever you are that are making you to struggle in your Christian faith, 
Pray to God that He gives you wisdom and strength and power to overcome them and to stand strong and fought for Him so that you don't lose the mark of uh, salvation by focusing on them so much. That our, our focus will be on the ultimate goal of salvation and not the hardships you go through in life as you persevere. So we shall pray. Our Lord and our King, we are grateful this morning for speaking to us. We thank you for your grace and mercy which shall upon us in of glory. We thank you for teaching us, Lord, perseverance is part of our journey as we look forward to the day you will call us home. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us a heart to persevere. You will give us wisdom to go through perseverance. You will give us strength to stand strong and firm in the faith. And Lord, you will guide us through this journey of salvation, Lord. That even as we persevere, Lord, we will remain firm to the message of the gospel King of glory. We pray that you may fill us with your spirit, Lord. That even the challenges you go through, Lord, they may not destroy us, Lord, but they will keep us, Lord. We pray uh, that Lord will keep us together as a family. That even as we look forward, the day will come home, Lord, we will be firm, faithful in him there to you and to us, King of glory. We pray for those who receive you, Lord, today, that you keep them, Lord, guide them, direct them, Lord, Father. Cause them to grow in salvation, the spiritual life, Lord, Father. Cause them to manifest, Lord, to the ark and to the world of God, for all things of God. We pray for the leadership of this children, Lord. Lord, you've given them a heavy task that's involving, but we ask you, Lord, to give them wisdom and strength. You connect them, Lord, with people who are going to lead faith to the kingdom of God. And Lord, we pray for the elders who are just about to exit calling, Lord, that you will stand with them and get them and show them the way of glory. We pray that you will open doors for them, Lord, that we don't know about you of glory. Even we pray for those preparing for exams, Lord, Father, that they may excel. We speak a blessing and we pray that Lord success be their portion, King of glory. And we commit everyone, Lord, before you. We ask that, Lord, you will happen upon the Lord. May you grant them the desires of their heart from the abundance of your heart King of God. We thank you, Lord, we worship you for this you pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Yes, praise the Lord, Judge. Praise the Lord once again. How many have been blessed? Wow. Uh, I take this time to thank the Lord so much for your spirit with us and He's still with us and also for the message of hope that is perseverance that we've heard from our speaker. Um, I know we have been going through a lot of things in our lives, different kind of challenges, but I know God is there for us and uh, from today's message we, have a, we need to embrace this spirit of perseverance and uh, this kind of um, perseverance, I know it is um, characterized in our lives. Even Jesus, he was rejected in, in his hometown. Even as we as men, we are also facing opposition and rejection, perhaps in the world or, in the, or before men. But we need to trust and stand firm in the Lord, knowing that we are um, more of the conquerors. Praise the Lord. I'm saved. And the Lord is my personal savior. My name is Timothy Chamanuel and the seal treasurer. I want to assure you that the, your finances are really doing well. Yeah. And also to thank the speaker for such a powerful message. May the Lord continue to increase in you and also to bless you when even with your fellow colleagues. And uh, to thank each and one of us for being a partaker of this fellowship. How I pray that the Lord may continue blessing us even as we continue and desire even to grow more in this world. There is only one scripture which I want us to share, even as we stand up, but as we stand in our feet. This person, Solomon, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9, verses 12, and he was saying, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not the swift, not the battle with the strong. Or does food come to the wise, or wealth to the brilliant, or favors to the lion? But time and chance 
happen to them all. So we need to trust God and know that at this, uh, at, uh, during this race, we need to embrace perseverance. May the Lord grace us. Shall we pray? Mighty and everlasting Father, we thank you, Master, because of the great things. We thank you because of the song of the day, O Lord. Anything, Lord, which has been sown in our hearts, O oh Father, I know that you are going even to keep it, even for us, O oh King of Glory, that you may not last, that you may use, that we may, may embrace, Lord, even this spirit of perseverance in our lives, O oh King of Glory. Perhaps whatever we are facing through uh, different kind of challenges in our lives, O oh King of Glory, we build our trust in you, knowing that you are the Lord who is going to grant us victory, you are the Lord who is going to win uh, battle for us. We thank you, Master, and honor your name. Thank you because of our members of glory. Thank you because you have given them and the desire and to seek you with all their hearts of glory. I pray that you and every day, Lord, you may stand on our side. Even as you are going the exams of us, of Father, I pray that you may never last, even that you may embrace integrity, Lord, and loyalty, that you may reflect who we, whom, who we, whom you are in our lives, O Master. As we are going to go uh, a different residential places of glory, I pray that thy love and mercy, Lord, shall follow us. For in such name, my prayer will be. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week.